when I'm met with challenges, I'm not using my power to fight. I'm literally surrendering my power, stepping out of the way and saying, God, thank you very much for doing everything that you're going to do because I know you can do it. And I'm just going to step aside, surrender my power because I know yours is stronger. And I'm choosing not to follow my own selfish desires, but choosing to follow God's will and knowing that I can't even fathom how good that is. today my intention was actually to come on here a lot more pepped up excited because we got to see baby today which was awesome and baby was just moving like crazy in there i was like oh my goodness super healthy found out that i'm more so just now hitting like 10 weeks the math that my midwife and I did was 10 weeks at that point. Um, and so when we saw a baby on the sonogram today, it actually measured about nine weeks and five days. So it actually pushed my due date to supposedly November 16th. We calculated November 7th. But again, the sonograms can be off to by, you know, five, six days or whatever. So we just going to see whenever the baby comes, okay? Uh, we already know babies come when they want to come, not when we decide. At least that's how it's supposed to be. So I'm not going to force this baby out. I'm not going to like mentally push the baby out. I can't do that. I definitely did that uh, with Micah and... God did not care because he was still a week overdue and I was in so much pain, so much like preterm labor or not preterm labor, but like prodromal labor, early labor. I was in early labor for like two to three weeks easily. Like literally I had mentally pushed him out in my mind at 38 weeks because that's how that's when Sarai was born when I was 38 weeks and so I had only mentally prepared to be pregnant for 38 weeks okay so mentally I was like okay where the baby at I'm getting contractions every day but they not you know the 511 or whatever they weren't close enough in the longer long enough duration and I was just like yeah mentally I had like set a limit for myself and God was like no no this baby is coming when I decide <laughs> not when you decide hey not when you're mentally checked out but your body is still it still has things to do and that was so frustrating y'all oh when I went and carried Micah to 41 weeks I was so miserable like oh lord it was like my third trimester was just like oh it was miserable okay it was June in Texas um I was running after a almost two-year-old. I was in a lot of physical pain. I had literally gone to the chiropractor for since 18 weeks. So for, I don't know, 20 weeks or no, 20, oh, more than that for 22 weeks. I don't know. Y'all math it for me because I, I can't 
I'm mentally checked out. At that point, I had to just collect myself <laughs> because I was not enjoyable to be around. Like, and I hate that. Like, I hate that that was the impression that I left on people, most importantly, Mark, but like other people. Like, I wasn't pleasant to be around. And I was very hormonal as well. So, y'all, I was, I was just feeling a lot of feels all the time. And it made me like, like kind of lose it. But also just, I was also going through so much like my own stuff, like personally. Um, I was still learning how to be a mom. Like literally while I'm pregnant with another kid, I'm still learning how to be a mom. I've only been doing it for like, almost two years at that point so it was still everything was still very new but also like I had experienced at least some level of like feeling and knowing in one season okay I got it like I finally understand this child like I finally feel like I've got things in order and then they hit another developmental milestone they enter into a whole new phase. And then once again, you are challenged to step your game up. Like I'm challenged as a person to show up as the mother God has called me to be every day. And a lot of days I try to do it by myself. And that's what I was doing my third trimester. It was like, I was still somewhat trying to do things by myself. And I'm married. Like, I have a great husband who's like super present. Like, y'all more present than me, <laughs> okay? I'm, I'm, that's me. Like, Mark is the romantic and want to be lovey-dovey and just affectionate and honestly emotional and just like vulnerable like he's that person in our relationship and I'm just growing so that I can actually be of service to him like and the entire mission of our marriage and who God has called each of us to be like he can't be who he's supposed to be when I'm not who I'm supposed to be so he can't level up if I'm not also leveling up and challenging him along the way because like that's the only way we get to a more spiritually mature and wise place is you are you are operating in a phase and you're challenged by something a test a trial a wilderness whatever it may be and you have the opportunity to show up and on a large scale you can think of it like you know when you have a baby like does the dad show up to actually father that child and be there and be present all that stuff because some people don't some people get to that point of having a child and they decide whether it's a slow decision or one that you make over and over again over time by not being there, not being present, not being whatever you know you're being called to be, but you're choosing not to because it feels too like too much. So you get to that place and then you can either not show up which again some people don't show up and that's the decision that they make and there's going to be always things coming at you like life-wise so and attacks and everything that happens so yeah everybody got stuff that they're battling while still trying to achieve the goal 
while still doing what they know they're called to do. And when you really tap into God's voice and his vision for you and not the vision you create for yourself, you recognize that when I'm met with challenges, I'm not using my power to fight. I'm literally surrendering my power, stepping out of the way and saying, God, thank you very much for doing everything that you're going to do because I know you can do it. And I'm just going to step aside, surrender my power because I know yours is stronger. And I'm choosing not to follow my own selfish desires, but choosing to follow God's will and knowing that I can't even fathom how good that is, right? Like God is only good. So if I choose to follow God as much as I can, then my life will be good and it won't just be good for me it'll be good for so many other people because when god has a plan for you listen he gonna use you like you will be used everywhere you are and that's essentially what that experience is is like you being used by god in some way you know like you have a function if you step outside of that function, then that is sin and that is you choosing not to show up, right? Like that choosing not to show up is also a like alternate route that God doesn't desire for you. He wants you to realize that the trial and the challenge is so that he can get something out of you so that you can level up and get lighter and more free. Because you got to be super free to understand why God wants relationship with us so much. To truly understand it. Because like, you truly understand God when you experience him for yourself. And listen, it's about becoming aware of him. Because once you finally become aware that he is in the room, you start to think back and you say, That was you too, God. Ooh, that time also? Yeah, that had to be you because nothing else makes sense for that to have gone the way that it did. And now all of a sudden you start seeing how God showed up for every single moment in your life in some way, shape, or form. And so to bring it all the way back, it's like, my third trimester pregnant with Micah, I was struggling with knowing I was choosing an alternate route, choosing a function I chose for myself instead of choosing God's function for me in this world. What is God's desire for me in this world? Why did he give me certain gifts and abilities why did he make me up this way why did he put my spirit in this body why i believe that it's because he has a very specific reason for me to be here he has a very specific reason reasons so it's like I really felt like I got hit with a ton of bricks my third trimester with Micah because I became aware.
aware. I didn't just become aware. I began to spend time with him. And he started revealing things to me and showing me things from my past. Showing me things for my future. That... have me so free y'all <laughs> that I can't do anything but tell y'all about God <laughs> literally I cannot not tell y'all about how good God is That's, 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 that freedom is something I've never thought I could have. And so when I think of my children and I think, my God, they are getting this version of me and nothing else. They'll never encounter 16 year old Jade. They'll never encounter 23 year old Jade. Because that girl is gone. She is gone. I'm a new thing. Jay Godbull is a new thing. And I'm just, again, man, surrendering your desire, your will in a moment, in a decision for God's plays into that. It plays into your freedom. You can't picture that when you're in the world and unaware. You can't imagine freedom when all you've known is bondage. Bondage. So, don't, don't think that God didn't protect you whew, from things you desired so badly at 15. Y'all, if God gave me the desires of my heart at 25, And that's why his grace and mercy are unmatched because I don't deserve this. I don't deserve a husband who is incredible and beyond, I mean, words can't even describe. I shouldn't have beautiful children. I should not be living this type of life. I should not be this free. But God, like, <sighs> surrender your desires, surrender your will, surrender your worries, surrender it and step aside let God come in and be the strong one let God come in and do the hard work obey him listen to him you know his voice better than you think you know his voice like Holy Spirit is talking to us all the time because it's always trying to get us closer to God to do the right thing and so if you're thinking like how do I know it's God talking to me slow down pause and just allow him to speak quiet your mind come into a place of comfort and vulnerability with him 
that have a real conversation about how you're feeling, what you're going through, like, and literally repent and say, God, you got it. Tell me what to do. That's what I'm going to do. Like, give it to me plainly. Give me a sign. Like, God, whatever way you know to get to me so that I notice, do that. <laughs> so that I know that I'm obeying you. And Lord, like, thank you in advance for what you will do. Because what you will do is good. That's it. Amen. No, no. Well, if you do it this way, God. And I I mean, I want to also. No. Mm -mm. Only his will. It's either yours or his. And yours is usually like temporarily satisfying, but not eternally beneficial. Y'all, I'm just saying things that I know because I lived it, living it seriously. And that's something that I've done a lot of studying, like God's word of who he is and how he operates and all of those things. And it's given me comfort and assurance that following him, is the best thing that I could ever do. Through this pregnancy, I will be regularly <laughs> trading in my worry for God's peace. I literally said that, I think yesterday, like when I was just having a moment and I was like, Lord, I'm trading my worry for your peace. I'm trading my worry for your peace. I'm trading my worry for your peace yeah all right y'all well 